What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in this video, I wanted to talk about an update that's been made to the Flowify add-on that I've talked about in the past on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Flowify in the past. It's very similar to his conform object add-on, but where conform object uses kind of a lattice in order to allow you to kind of like uh, bend things along surfaces in this way, what Flowify does is it allows you to uh, set a base surface and a target surface, which for me in the kind of modeling that I do, I feel allows me to be a little bit more precise with the way this is mapped onto objects. But the exciting thing that he's added to this and something that I've not really seen on a flow add-on in any software so far is the ability to actually map all the way along cylinders now. So previously the way this worked is you needed a four-sided target shape and a four-sided base shape in order to make this work. But now um, you can use a four-sided target shape or a cylinder. So you can wrap things all the way around a cylinder. Uh, if you do want to check out Flowify, uh, you can check it out at the cgessentials.com slash Flowify. That is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you purchase through that link. But let's jump over into Blender real quick and take a look at the way that this works with the new update. And so um, after you've installed Flowify, remember that what you do with objects is you've got, you've got your object that you want to bend, you've got your base surface, and then you've got your target surface, right? So your base surface needs to have four corners. That just aids with the mapping. But the way this works is you just want to take this object, but I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to do a Flowify. And notice what this does is this allows me to pick a corner and then pick the corresponding mapping point on your surface. Now with this new update, the way the lines come in here on the cylinder is actually really cool. You can actually see lines and this is basically showing you the way that this is going to get mapped onto this surface just like this. And notice how this is allowing us to map this 360 degrees along the surface. Now remember that this is live, meaning if I make it bigger or smaller, this is going to change and adjust in here just like this because it's being live mapped onto the surface. Now, one thing that is important is you do need to understand um, that the amount of geometry that's in your base shape is going to affect the result you're going to get. So in this case, say that we took this object and we're just gonna do something simple and non-destructive. We're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and we're gonna do a simple modifier right here. And we're just gonna bump this up a little bit. Now I do want to make sure that I've applied any rotations and scales in here, but notice what's happening is that's adding this additional geometry in here and that's making our mapping a little bit more smooth along these edges. We'll take a look at another one where this, uh, this is more visible in a second. So let's jump over here and basically what I've done here is I've created a surface using random flow. So this is just a random panels in here. Um, note that this does have a subdivision applied, which I'm going to remove for a second. But again, notice I've got this panel in here. I've got it placed on this surface. Well, then what I can do is I can right click. I can do a flowify, flowify, and then I want to go find this corner and I want to align it with a corner right here. And notice how this is crossing them, which is not what you want. So we're just gonna move this down like this. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this object and it's gonna try to bend it along this surface. Now notice how we're not getting an especially great result. That's because this, if we look at it, is lacking that supporting geometry. So again, usually what you can do with your base geometry is you can just come in here and you can just add that subdivision surface modifier, switch it to simple, and then just add some additional cuts in here. Now, ideally, you might want to actually like model this out with more supporting geometry. Just because of the way this was created, I'm not going to do that. But notice how this now follows along my cylinder 360 degrees. And remember that the way that this sits on the surface is affecting the way that it's mapped in here. So if I was to scale this on the Y axis, or maybe on the Z axis, notice what's happening is this, if it's shorter than your base shape right here, you're going to have a gap. So all you have to do is just make sure that you've modeled this all across the face in here, just like this. 
All right, so notice how this will work for things like text, but what can get a little bit weird is the geometry, right? So what I did is I created a text object in here. I just converted it to a mesh, meaning it doesn't have that nice quad geometry. Now this will still work, right? If I pick Flowify and then just Flowify from this corner to this corner, it's definitely gonna flow it along this surface, but the problem is this does get a little bit weird because this is all like that triangulated geometry. So um, really all that means is that means just be careful creating your geometry and the way that it works because your, your uh, result is only as good as the geometry that you put in. And so if I come back in here and I model this F with quads, so if I take a look at this and then I take a look at the subdivision, notice how this shows up a lot better on my surface, right? So if I come in here and I add the subdivision in here and I do that properly, then the supporting geometry looks really good and I'm not getting any of that pinching anymore. So, um, and I've hidden my plane right here, but notice how if I move this around on that surface, your text is going to move around as well, which by the way, has some interesting possibilities for like animated text and other things like that, if you do wanna do that. Um, but just be aware that that supporting geometry is going to be really important. So any kind of barrels or anything you wanna wrap around a barrel, I think this could be an excellent tool for doing things like that. So notice how this can take the shape, wrap it completely around the barrel. And again, if I make adjustments, so if I scale size like this or this, notice how that's translating into your map right here. So um, for me, the cylindrical mapping is actually really exciting. And then one last thing I did wanna show you at least was kind of the difference between conform object and flowify, because there's a bunch of questions on when you would use which one? All right, so this one, I've got the exact same shape on both sides. So for Flowify, what I would do is I would do a Flowify, I would go find that corner and map it to this corner right here. And that's going to basically give me my mapping. Now you are going to want to add some detail to your initial geometry in order to get a smooth merge in here. But for me, this maps really nicely to the surface because it's been modeled specifically on this surface right here. And again, depending on where you move this, what kind of changes you make, right? So if I rotate this, notice how your mapping is gonna change other things like that. So you're working with flat geometry. On the other hand, conform object, what it does is you can right click on this and you wanna pick up your object and your surface, but then you wanna pick up conform object right here, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle. I wanna to make sure my deformation grid is on. And so again, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing, but now we can scroll down. We're gonna scroll down and add some simple subdivisions to this. Notice how this just adds that modifier in here. But with conform object, what this one's going to do is it gives you the ability to use this deformation grid in here. So first off, conform object to me gets a little bit weird around the outside of a shape, right? So if, it's a, if it strays outside of the surface in any way, you start getting this weird effects. So you just have to scale it in a little bit. Not a bad thing, just something to be aware of. But, but so what conform object does is it actually creates this deformation grid in here. So say that, for example, I wanted to take all of these and kind of scale them about the middle. Notice how I can use this in order to quickly move that. And I can move these up and down. I probably want to turn proportional editing off to do that. But you can use this lattice inside of a conform object in order to kind of dictate the way that things bend around in the model, right? So I can pick these individually or separately and make those adjustments. So this one's a lot more free form to me, which is really good for like character modeling and things like that. But for me, like the architectural modeling and things, this allows you to be a little bit more precise. So um, both excellent add-ons, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do, but they both give you the ability to deform objects a along these complex surfaces. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. I'll link to Flowify on this page. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about both these tools. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.